Hey folks, I'm back again with a brand new KISS tutorial video and I have a feeling you're going to love it. The project that we are making for our July KISS is this beautiful boutique dress hanger. This awesome design comes with four blocks which can be made in either the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 or the 7x7 size hoops. In this video I will show you the stitch out of block 2 and the construction of your hanger. We recommend you follow our photograph written instructions provided in conjunction with this video tutorial. If you would like to receive a 30% discount on this design, head over to our July KISS Facebook group. The link will be in the description. We also encourage everyone to enter the monthly competition by posting photos of their completed hanger. If you enjoy this video tutorial on the boutique dress hanger, please like and subscribe. Enjoy! Begin by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop. Load the design onto your machine and use applique scissors for trimming the batting and fabric. Place batting one on top of the hoop. Stitch the batting down and remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about one to two millimeters from the stitching. Stitch the place and line for the top background. Place fabric A right side up on top of the hoop covering the place and line. Stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Leave the excess fabric in the seams. Repeat the applique process with the bottom background using fabric B. Trim, leaving the excess fabric in the seams. Embroider the detail on the background. Embroider the satin stitch between the backgrounds. Repeat the applique process with the handbag using a piece of fabric large enough to cover the place and line. Trim. Embroider the satin stitch around the bag. Embroider the flap and handle of the handbag. Embroider the hat stand. Repeat the applique process with the hat using a piece of fabric large enough to cover the place and line. Trim. Embroider the satin stitch around the hat. Repeat the applique process with the shoe box using a piece of fabric large enough to cover the place and line. Trim. Embroider the satin stitch around the bottom of the box. Embroider the lid of the box. Embroider the inside and outside of the shoe. Embroider the top of the dress form and the bag strap in the background. Repeat the applique process with the dress using fabric C. Trim, leaving the excess fabric in the seams. Then embroider the satin stitch around the dress. Embroider the necklace and the bag strap on the front. Nice work, you have now completed the stitch out of block 2. Remove your work from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch.
and hold the side until all your blocks are made. Once you have completed all the amazing blocks, lay them out on your work surface in the correct layout. Then place the first two blocks right sides together and pin along one edge lining up the border stitching the best you can, aiming to line up the satin stitch points correctly. Now sew a half inch seam sewing just inside the border lines already on the panels. Open the seams and iron them flat. Continue joining the other blocks in the same fashion. Now join the rows to each other by placing the first two rows right sides together. Pin and stitch the seams on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks, so the stitching will not be seen on the right side later. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Measure the join blocks, allowing for an inch overlapping each side of the blocks and cut your fabric. Cut two one and a quarter inch strips, fabric F, for the flat piping on the sides. Note, the flat piping strips should not have any joins in them, as this will cause them to look uneven when finished. Press the strips of flat fabric for the piping in half width ways, ensuring the raw edges are sitting exactly on top of each other. Lay a flat piping strip right side up on top of the bottom edge of the join blocks, with the folded edge pointing towards the centre of the background fabric. Pin or quilt clip together and stitch into place, with a quarter inch 6mm seam. Repeat for the other long edge of your hanger. The edges of the flat piping will overlap the ends. Trim. Now repeat the exact same process for the remaining short ends with fabric G. If you would like borders, first decide how you would like them. We made ours 8 cm, 3 inches wide. Measure the length of the runner through the middle of the runner to give a more average measurement. Cut two strips of border fabric the length you just measured, fabric H. Then cut two pieces of batting two to match.
Secure the batting to the border fabric by lightly spraying temporary adhesive to the batting and then lay your fabric right side up on the batting. Place the border fabric on top of the runner with the attached batting right sides together. Pin or clip together. Stitch together with a half inch seam. Pinning and stitching on the wrong side of the hanger means you can make sure you're stitching inside the border line on the front of the hanger. This will ensure this line of stitching will not show on the front. Repeat for the opposite border. If you use basting stitches on your borders, go ahead and remove them now. Trim back the batting from the seam allowance to reduce any seam bulk. Fold over and press the side border down neatly. Top stitch the border for a neat flat finish. If needed, trim the borders to make them even. Now measure one of the side edges without a border, including the new border width in your measurement. Cut two strips of border fabric the length you just measured, fabric eye, then cut two pieces of batting three to match. Repeat the basting stitch method or use the temporary adhesive spray that we did for the first two borders. Place the border fabric with the attached batting on top of the runner, right sides together. Pin or clip, and stitch a half inch seam from the edge. If you use basting stitches on your borders, go ahead and remove them now. Trim back the batting from the seam allowance. Repeat for the opposite border. Fold over and iron the side border down neatly. Top stitch the border for a neat flat finish. Trim the borders to make them even. Take Fabric J loop fabric and fold in half, lengthwise and wrong sides together. Iron the fold and unfold. Fold both the long raw edges into the middle crease and iron.
fold again at half lengthways. Sew the edges together and repeat for the other side if you would like it to look even. Make sure the bobbin is the same color thread as the top thread. Fold loop at half and cut. Fold the loop in half lengthways and stay stitched together. Pin both the loops to your wall hanging. Note, placement can be where you wish. We kept the outside of the loop in line with the flat piping seam. Stay stitch in place. Place fabricate backing on your table, right sides facing up. Place your sewn hanger on top of fabricate, right sides together. Pin in place, leaving an opening of about 5 inches, 13 centimeters for turning. Stitch a half inch seam, remembering to leave the opening. Trim the seams to a quarter inch or leave as they are. Clip the corners for more pointed ones when turned. Turn the right way out through the opening. Use that pink thang or chopstick to help push out the corners. Press with the iron. Hand stitch or use fabric glue the opening closed. Your wall hanger or runner is now complete. Thanks for watching our tutorial on the Dress Boutique Hanger. All the best with your entries into the July Kiss competition. For more beautiful machine embroidery designs, go to sweepea.com. That is S-W-P-E-A dot com. I'll see you next month.